Hello and welcome back to another installment of Trey the Explainer. Sorry for this time super extended break, I was unfortunately traveling across the US visiting various fossil sites in national parks in Utah, Arizona, and Nevada. I saw Allosaurus tracks, walked in a cool slot canyon, and saw some really amazing rock formations. It was really great, but after seeing how long it's been since I made a video, I really need to make up for lost time. So today, I'm going back to my roots. Finally, another cryptid profile. We are going to maybe finish up talking about globsters. Those bizarre corpses of mysterious sea monsters that wash up on shores all over the world. In my previous installments, we've seen late surviving plesiosaurs turn out to be basking sharks. Massive sea serpents turn out to be the remains of the elusive beaked whales. A giant octopus turning out to be merely whale blubber. And E.L. Wallace hiding in the shadows plotting the next global conspiracy like the coward he really is. If you don't understand any of this, check out those videos in the link below. As we have discovered, pretty much all of the remains we have discussed can easily be identified as known animals. But maybe this won't be the case this time. Ooh, got a little hook there for you guys. This is Globsters Part 4, where I try to examine and identify some of the strangest remains to wash up on our shores. In August 28, 2006, the highly decomposed remains of a very large creature were discovered on the coast of Sakhalin, an island north of Japan that is owned by Russia. Several pictures were taken of the mostly skeletal carcass, some of which illustrate that the animal it belonged to was very large, especially in relation to the humans in the photographs, some of whom may be military but I'm guessing may also be just civilians wearing camo. The carcass appears to have been in very advanced stages of decomposition, as the majority of the body is simply bone, and the little flesh that remains appears to be only loosely connected to the bone. As far as I know, less than a dozen photos of the carcass were taken, which ended up on the internet. Unfortunately, I could find little to no information on really anything about the photos and the carcass itself, like who discovered it, what happened to it, and so on. Pretty much the only information I could find on the monster comes from Cryptid's Wiki, and there's really no sources attached to it, so it's doubtful any of this is true. The wiki describes a scientific survey, which is not named nor is its authors named, that examined the body and found its teeth were canine-like and its body was covered in fur. The body was allegedly taken by the Russian government and experimented on, however again this info may be dubious. The name of the Sakhalin Island Sea Wolf was attached to the corpse, as the images and the information circulated around the internet. Some people claimed the body belonged to a plesiosaur, others a primitive late surviving whale relative like Basilosaurus, and others made even stranger suggestions. The images of the monster became especially well known when they became the subject of a certain online creepypasta thing called the SCP Foundation. The SCP Foundation is essentially a fictional website where people create fictional, mythical, and demonic creatures and anomalies under the guise of a secret government organization that attempts to contain said entities. The website is basically a fan-made version of the X-Files show or Lost Tapes or something of that sort. Well, anyways, our old buddy the Sea Wolf apparently became associated with the website when a user created the sentient, immortal, reptile-like creature with the name SCP-682. A photograph was posted to the website rebranding the Sakhalin Island monster as SCP-682 after being exposed to acid. SCP-682 quickly became one of the website's most popular creatures and countless bits of fan artwork and even video game models were based off of the photograph. And just like that, the entire Sanklin Island story with the carcass washed up on shore was pretty much forgotten. Well, regardless of what origin story you believe, what the heck is this thing? Well, I think whoever authored the post on Cryptid's wiki had the right idea by looking at the teeth in the skull of the creature. If we examine the skull, we can find that the creature's skull isn't a canine or wolf at all, but is pretty much identical to that of a beluga whale. From the conical teeth, to some of the lines and depressions along the skull, to even a distinctive divot in the jaw that appears in some beluga skulls. The rest of the animal's body, including its mammalian backbone, again matches that of a beluga. Again, it's amazing how different some animals look once they have rotted away significantly. Whales and dolphins are especially victims of this effect, often resembling prehistoric reptiles and crocodilians without their flesh, especially after they lose their tails, flippers, and melons. In fact, many globsters turn out to merely be highly decomposed whales and dolphins with various parts of their bodies missing. It's quite clear SCP-682, or the sea wolf, is merely a decomposed beluga which are found in the region. 
Funny enough, this circumstance isn't unusual on this specific island, as I've already talked about in one of my previous videos. Apparently another globster washed up on this island in 2015, and it was dubbed the Sakhalin Island Woolly Whale. Darren Nish, as well as myself, in my previous video, identified the woolly whale as the remains of a beaked whale, likely a Baird's beak whale, an incredibly rare and large species of cetacean that strongly resembles sea serpents and is often responsible for many globsters throughout the world. Although not technically a globster, as it isn't really a dead body that washed up on shore, photographs of this rather bizarre and unusual creature has stumped various internet forums as well as myself. In 2007, four images of a gelatinous, slug-like thing were uploaded to Tonmo.com, the octopus news magazine online, an online internet forum for marine biology-related topics by Dr. Steve O'Sheen, a pretty notable scientist who studies squids and other cephalopods who has done research on countless rare and mysterious deep-sea creatures, namely giant and colossal squids. He apparently received the images from Gwyneth Penry, who I believe also is another marine biologist who is notable for her work on the effects of pollution on marine life. Steve gives a relatively detailed description of the conditions of the photograph and the subject revealed by Penry. It was March 7, 2007, off the coast of South Africa. A company by the name of Ocean Safaris was giving its 930 dolphin watching cruise on the ship by the name of Dolphin One, when a peculiar creature was spotted by the crew and the tourists. The creature was claimed to have been 30 to 40 centimeters, or about a foot long. Its appearance was extremely odd, as it resembled an octopus or jellyfish with its gelatinous-like body, possessing a skirt and a trunk-like nose at its front, vents and an inflatable melon that appeared to help it in its swimming style. The creature moved slowly, using its organ structures to propel itself through the water, using a very bizarre motion. A pod of over 200 dolphins were in the area feeding on fish, however, showed disinterest towards the identified creature, and the creature respectively paid them no mind as well. It allegedly swam towards the vessel and lifted its, for lack of a better word, trunk out of the water, as if to sense what was in front of it, and then I guess it swam away, never to be seen again. Apparently several photos were taken, and this is all that remains of the creature. So the question remains, what the heck is this exactly? Well, that's a bit of a difficult question. The subject of the photos is pretty convincing and looks pretty realistic to me. A hoax seems like a possible option, but the witnesses involved seem pretty reliable. The people involved are scientists and the reputation would be on the line if such a hoax were revealed. So a hoax scene, to me, I think seems unlikely. But I guess it's always a possibility. The photos were uploaded around April 1st, April 5th to be in fact, so maybe it's a practical joke between marine biologists. However, I don't think so. Steve and the people involved seem to be pretty serious about it and give a lot of unnecessarily detailed information. So I'm not really supporting the hoax option. If real, the identity of the creature is hard to pin down, as it has various traits that are sort of reminiscent of known creatures, but mm, nothing can really be really clearly pinned down. It's clearly an invertebrate of some kind, but what kind is unclear. It somewhat resembles a type of sea slug, like a Spanish dancer, or a dancing sea slug, or maybe even a sea hare. Others suggest a Portuguese man of war, and others suggest a ray of some kind. One photo even makes it somewhat resemble a dolphin's snout a little bit. But none of these really match up for me, especially with the movement of the creature. The entire biology of the creature is just weird and unlike anything I've ever seen. And as of yet, I haven't really seen any identification that fits entirely. Remember, Steve and other people involved are notable marine biologists, and Steve has repeatedly said he can't even identify the subject. I think we must acknowledge a possible option, that this is evidence of an unidentified, and as of yet, unknown species, belonging to maybe an entirely unknown genus, or maybe even phylum of soft-bodied creatures. It's rather fascinating to think that there may be alien creatures like this still yet to be identified in our oceans, and I find these identified invertebrates far more likely to be real and plausible than a still-living megalodon, for instance. I suggest that this may be an as-of-yet undiscovered type of sea slug, or maybe even a weird advanced form of colonial animal like a man of war. There are in fact many only recently discovered marine organisms that are incredibly elusive. For example, many might not know this, but orcas or killer whales essentially have different subspecies or races within their overall species. Orcas, much like humans, have different characteristics depending on where you find them. Marine biologists can often separate orca populations within at least four different quote-unquote types. One orca type is especially mysterious, as it was only identified after a mass stranding event in 1955 in New Zealand, where a pod of orcas with a very distinctive and unique bulbous head shape had beached themselves on the shore. 
It would be almost 50 years until this orca population, named Type D orcas, would be spotted again out in the open ocean. And it wasn't until 2014 that they were actually filmed a live surfacing. Just a few months ago, they were spotted again in March 2018 and filmed for the first time underwater. These orcas have shown that relatively large organisms can evade detection for a very long time. But then again, who really knows at this point? It is still possible for this to be an elaborate hoax, but regardless, crap guys, you finally did it. I think I really have no explanation for this one. I linked the original forum containing the info and pictures of this guy in the description, and tell me what you think. Maybe we can get Darren Nish's opinion on it. Unfortunately, as I've found, because this forum is somewhat old, some of the links don't work. One, to my shock, linked me to a pornographic website, so be careful, guys. I myself tried to register to the forum to get a better look at all these pictures, but unfortunately couldn't for some reason, so meh. Anyways, if you've seen this invertebrate, please contact your local scientist. The suspect is buoyant and gelatinous. The next Glabster we have for today was a pretty recent one. Only a few months ago, this story broke. In March of this year, photos of what was claimed to be an unknown creature washed up on shore in Wolf Island National Refuge in southeast Georgia. And images were widely circulated and claims were made about it being the remains of a late surviving plesiosaur. The remains were allegedly found by Jeff Warren, and it appears the specimen was not taken so a close examination is impossible. I could only find, at the very best, three photos or videos of the subject, all pretty far away and all rather blurry and undetailed. The person recording the video and taking pictures did a pretty crappy job, all things considered. The subject, I kind of don't want to say creature for reasons I'll go into later, is rather strange looking. It has a long neck with a bird-like head, at least one large flipper at the base of the neck, if there's a corresponding one on the other side of the subject is something not clearly shown in the pictures, a large open cut in its stomach area, and a shark-like tail. Now, just looking at the creature, I find a few things very suspect. Firstly, is that it looks rather fake, if you will, paper mache y It has these weird crinkled edges on its skins that resemble, well, paper mache The body shape looks rather sloppy, like it was homemade. The wound is probably the most suspect thing, as it makes the subject look very hollow, like a cardboard box or something, and not like an actual animal. The guts and stuff really don't look like they belong to the body. To me, it looks like someone poorly shoves chicken liver or cold cuts or just the guts of some other real animal into a fake dummy body, as they don't even look like they're coming out of the incision, more like they're replaced from the outside by kind of shoving them into the cut. Furthermore, the sea monster perfectly resembles the local legend of the Alta Mahaha sea monster of Georgia, as well as the countless local depictions of said monster. And yes, I guess this can be seen as a validation of those legends, but I find it more likely that someone, a hoaxer from the area, is basing this fake dummy body directly off of those depictions and playing a bit of a publicity stunt or practical joke on the local people. Additionally, I find it rather strange that better photos were not taken or even that the body wasn't taken so it could be better examined. My best guess is that this is a hoax. A paper mache or plastic dummy sea monster was made and the image is staged. Guts and meat from real animals was likely crudely stuffed into this dummy to make it look more realistic. I do not think this is a real animal of any kind, if it be known or unknown. A decomposing shark or dolphin or fish just isn't going to cut it in this case. I think it's just a constructed model of a local cryptid. It would have certainly have helped if we got better footage and images of the body, or even had it to be further examined. But conveniently, we do not. I suggest this was done intentionally so that we, as the viewers, couldn't see through the obviousness of the hoax and its sloppy job. This opinion of mine is one shared by many, from marine biologist Quentin White from Jacksonville University to John Crawfish Crawford, a naturalist from the University of Georgia Maritime Extension and Georgia Sea Grant, who both believe this is just some kind of practical joke. There was another globster discovered rather recently in Indonesia. It was huge and claimed to have belonged to a massive squid, but it's pretty obvious what it is based on various features. It's merely a humpback whale on its back. And... Ah, what the heck. Because this is probably the last episode of this Globster series, let's just do a rapid, easy identification round. An orca. A sturgeon. Probably sperm whale fat. Probably a juvenile pilot whale. Hey, can we um, please slow this down? A highly decomposed raccoon. Probably another raccoon. An amateur Japanese model maker's submission to a magazine competition. A Megamouth shark. <sighs> Oof. 
And yeah, that's pretty much all of the notable and interesting globsters I could find. We finally did it, and the results are everything but this one being either known animals or hoaxes. There's probably hundreds of globsters I have failed to mention, but I think most of them will again fall under those two categories. I hope you enjoyed this examination into the unknown of our oceans. The next time I talk about weird dead corpses, we are selling our beach house and moving to the country, with the next topic being alien slash humanoid remains. Alright, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this latest installment of Cryptid Profile. I'll see you next time in a video discussing the mythical creature named Leviathan, and what it can tell us about the connections between religions all around the world. Alright, see ya! I need a fix cause I'm going down, I know the bits that I left up town, I need a fix cause I'm going down.